and also on YouTube. Okay, so, um, first of all, let me just say that um, I don't know what happened today. Uh, my allergies are really killing me. I think it's my allergies. So I'm going to try to be as not disgusting as possible, okay? Uh, but like I said, if you see me sniffling or whatever, it's uh, probably, well, my allergies, okay? Um, so today we are going to be talking about um, sugar addiction, okay? Um, let me, first of all, let me just say that when we talk about being like fat adapted, I've said from the beginning, it has very little to do with ketosis. I mean, you could eat donuts all day. If you don't eat donuts for a few hours, you know, you may actually bump into ketosis. Okay. So like, you know, ketosis just means you don't have any carbs, you're burning fat, whatever. You know, so ketosis is not like a really big deal. Um, that's only a very small part of getting your body fat adapted. Okay. Uh, the so-called, you know, keto flu really has a whole lot to do with being dehydrated. It has a whole lot to do with when the water is leaving your body because carbs hold water. When the water is leaving your body, it flushes a lot of electrolytes out, okay? So it doesn't necessarily, you know, being fat adapted means you're in ketosis. Being fat adapted means that, you know, you don't have the keto flu. But like I said, I mean, the ketosis, people fall in and out of all the time. And, um, you know, the keto flu, if you drink your water and take your electrolytes, you are not going to be having you know, you're not even going to feel the keto flu. You're just going to jump right past it. Okay. Now, um, you know, another thing that people don't talk about is um, using the toilet. Okay. Um, like I said, um, you know, people don't talk about it, but some people, when they go carnivore, which is basically keto without fiber, you know, they are constipated. They cannot defecate. Some people defecate um, liquid. Okay. They just have diarrhea. So, like I said, uh, that's another, you know, another thing. But once again, that also doesn't necessarily, you know, embody fat adaptation. Fat adaptation means all of the above, plus you actually feel good just eating fat and protein. And that means like mentally or emotionally as well as just, um, you know, physically, Okay, it means that you don't miss carbohydrates anymore. It means you look forward to eating your, you know, fatty, you know, high protein foods. Okay, you look forward to having, you know, like I said, I told somebody a while ago, my cheat day was like a salad. It's like, what's your favorite cheat day? A salad. And it's like, wait a minute, did you just say that your favorite cheat day is a salad? Because I love, you know, I love eating like lettuce. Okay, or maybe a couple onions, you know, a couple sliced peppers, whatever. Okay, basically like no calories, no carbs. Uh, you know, throw in some olives, like a Greek salad or some kind of Mediterranean salad. I love eating the, um, you know, I love eating olives. I love eating like cheese, which is feta or whatever. So my salad, I like, you know, Israeli salads. I love Greek salads are great. The Turks make really good salads. And, um, you know, in America, like a Cobb salad with, uh, you know, oil for the dressing and lots of salt and pepper and, uh, you know, uh, double gorgonzola and double bacon, hold the croutons. And I'm, I actually enjoy that. I look forward to that. And the thing about it is not only do I actually enjoy consuming a Cobb salad, okay, as in I do, I enjoy taking the Cobb salad. I do not miss the croutons. I do not miss the sugary, um, you know, salad dressings. But what's more important is I enjoy eating it. I do not miss eating the carbs. And unlike the carbs, after a salad like that, I actually feel good. So once again, excuse me, if you just joined, I just said, my allergies are killing me today. I'm going to try to be as little disgusting as possible. Favorite cheat day is a salad with meatballs and cheese. Very good. Be very careful with meatballs. A lot of meatballs have a lot of breadcrumbs in them, okay? So if you actually take meat, make it into a ball, and throw it into the oven yourself, that's good. But if you're going to get, a, like, a meatball from a restaurant, you really need to be careful because a lot of people put a lot of breadcrumbs in. It's like, a, it's like a scary, it's like a trick. But anyway, that's the point. Like, that's how I know I'm fat adapted. If I am hungry, I actually look forward to eating fat and protein. Okay. I've said it before. Like I had a girlfriend where like, if I was like hangry, as the kids say, 
Um, like if I was just angry, uh, angry because like I'm in a bad mood because I'm really hungry, it would be like we'd get home and she'd be like, "Come here." Like we walk into the we walk into the kitchen. She'd open the refrigerator, take a knife, take a slice of butter, open. She put a slice of butter in my mouth, then I'd eat it. I'd be like. I'm sorry, was I being a dick again? And it's like I said, it's like, you know, literally, so like for me, eating fat, eating butter or something like that is like a normal person eating sugar, you know? It's like, you know, if somebody's hangry and they're in a bad mood, you give them like a scoop of ice cream and they suddenly feel better because the sugar hits their body and the carbs. Like for me, eating butter is like that, boom. Love a juicy steak with eggs. That's exactly what we're gonna get to. So first of all, so like I said, what you need to do is you actually need to like enjoy the food that you're eating and you need to not be craving the food that you quote cannot eat, okay? Let's talk about cannot eat because this is a big deal. Like, so can you lose fat while eating carbs? Yes, of course, you certainly can, okay? I'm not saying that, you know, you cannot. Um, you know, let's put it like this. Can you lose fat while drinking beer? you absolutely positively can lose fat while drinking beer, okay? There's no reason you can't. But beer is like, let's say, you know, whatever, 120, 200 calories, it depends, fine. So basically just consume, you know, 120, 200 calories, fewer carbs somewhere else in your diet, and boom, you're still on the same calories. Now, does alcohol affect you hormonally and blah, 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 and all this, of course. But, you know, just strictly calories in versus calories out, you could certainly, you know, drink beer, and lose weight. Now, let's say you're an alcoholic and if you drink one beer, you're going to drink a six pack, you're gonna get in your car, you're gonna to drive to the store, you're gonna buy a 12 pack or a case, and you're gonna have 18 to 20 to 24 beers because you had one beer, because you're an alcoholic and you cannot stop having alcohol. Okay, now what we're basically talking about is if you fit one beer into your diet, you certainly can have a beer. But if you're an alcoholic and you're automatically going to say, have, let's say, you know, 20 beers, okay, and 20 beers, and let's say they're 200 calories a piece, okay, well, that's 4,000 calories of beer you drank. You cannot fit 4,000 calories of anything into a cutting diet. Okay. And if you could, it's like, you know, like alcohol is like basically like a sugar. I mean, like no fat, no protein, nothing but beer. I mean, you just cannot do that. Okay. Not to mention like hormonally what alcohol does to you and how it slows down fat burning and, you know, the fact that you're going to be drunk off your ass and whatever, and you're not going to be able to work out because you're drunk and whatever, and you're dehydrated and yada, 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 but just pure calories in versus calories out. Now, the problem with a lot of people, you know, who uh, the problem with a lot of people who go ahead and, you know, are addicted to carbohydrates is they, like alcoholics, cannot just have like one little bit of carbohydrates. OK, I'll give you one example, for instance, uh, you know, one of my favorite magazines ever was Muscle Media, you know, Muscle Media 2000, which they later became Muscle Media. If you're old enough to remember the 90s, you hopefully remember that magazine. And, uh, you know, the guy who owned it, uh, you know, wrote some incredible editorials. And one of them he was writing, he's talking about, like, you know, a girl that he knew who was, like, you know, fitness chick. You know, and it's like, you know, she right in front of him, she goes ahead and she, you know, gets, like, a bowl of granola. And he's like, you know, are, like, is this a cheat day? Like, what the hell's going on? And she's like, oh, no, it's just a bowl of granola. granola. It's okay. So he weighed the, you know, the contents of the bowl of granola and figured out it was, like, 800 calories. And it was a girl, like a bikini chick, okay? Like a bodybuilder cannot eat, you know, 800 calories and say it doesn't count. So like a little bikini chick, you know, taking in 800 calories and saying it doesn't count. So like a lot of people just do not, you know, when they take in their, cal their carbohydrates, like they do not really track well, okay? But also there are the people that like if they have one bowl of cereal, they're going to have 12. You know, if they have one donut, they're going to have a dozen, okay? And I'm one of them. You know, I am, I can drink like a sip of alcohol, put it down. And like, literally, if we're having a good conversation or if we're watching TV or, you know, MMA fight or something, I will literally forget about the alcohol that I had. I like, you know, I'll just put it down. You'll find it the next day and be like, okay, so Bob, you know, decides to have a, you know, he said he wanted a beer. He took one sip and he just walked away. I, you know, I'm not, a, you know, but there are people, we all know there are people who will, you know, 
take a sip of beer, they're just sucking down the whole bottle. They're just sucking, like I said, they just cannot stop. So if you are addicted to carbohydrates, you basically have to live your life as though you are a um, you know, an alcoholic, okay? And when I was a kid, you know, I did have, you know, alcoholics in the family. And, you know, I did as a kid, I actually went to like Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. Like I said, I personally, for some reason, you know, am not alcohol addicted on a chemical level. Okay, so I'm fine, but I did have people I knew, and I was like I said, I was like around these people, okay, and um, I just see like a massive connection between alcoholics, okay, the evolution of the alcoholic and the evolution of the carb addict. Um, you know, one thing that I say, for instance, is like when I was in the, it was probably the eighties. I was a young child when I, when I went to this Alcoholics Anonymous meeting as like a little guest. Um, and the guy was considerably older. Okay. So, I mean, he was maybe a baby boomer, you know, maybe born in the forties. Okay. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Like he was, he was, he was considerably older. And what he said, you know, he was like giving a little speech for like the Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. And he was saying, he's like, yeah, you know, they would, people would tell him stuff like, oh, it's okay. You can drink, just drink in moderation and, you know, have one beer or one glass of wine and just make it last the whole meal. And it's like, if you're a fucking alcoholic, you can't do that, man. If you're an alcoholic, you can't do that. You know, like you can't, you just cannot. Okay. It's just ridiculous. Like, and the only reason that people like legitimately stop drinking these days and that alcohol, alcoholism is not as huge of a problem as it perhaps once was is, you know, I don't want to get all too off the rails here, but like, first of all, it's not, it's not acceptable anymore. If you watch Mad Men, you could see like, you know, I remember there was like the guy's boss was visiting and it's like, here, you want one for the road? The guy was wasted off his ass, barely made it to the car. He had actually like one for the road, but an extra martini for him to drink in the car while he was already drunk driving home. So, you know, alcoholism is not, a, it's not acceptable anymore. Unlike obesity, which is, you know, you can't fat shame people. So obesity is certainly accepted, but I'm not going to get too far off the rails. Right? I just want to say, you know, but the fact of the matter is that, you know, the concepts that Alcoholics Anonymous uses is one of the reasons why I personally believe that you do not see so many alcohol addicted people anymore. Okay, so, excuse me again. Um, so like I said, uh, basically what you have to do is you have to approach this as though you're an alcoholic, okay? Um, and, uh, you know, that's kind of like I said, that ruins a whole lot of, you know, the people who, uh, you know, the people who, say they can't go on a low carb diet because they like carbs too much are the people who need the most to go on a low carb diet. There are so many people that you see, they're like, I could never lose weight. I could never stick to a diet. Um, I've not had sugar since before Christmas and I have not missed it. Exactly. Exactly. Christmas time is to hang out with your family. Christmas time is, you know, to go running around in the snow to go, you know, to look at the birds, you know, to do whatever, you know, to be around your family. And, you know, once again, talking about alcoholics, just like an alcoholic doesn't have to drink and get wasted with everybody else, you can drink, he cannot drink. The important time about Christmas is you are together and you are a motherfucking piece of shit asshole who needs to burn in shit for the rest of his life and in hell afterwards. If you believe in hell, you have to burn in it. If you are going to say, you cannot come to my Christmas party if you don't fucking drink, knowing the guy's an alcoholic. But for some reason, when it comes to the holidays, a carb addicted person is a piece of shit if he doesn't fucking, you know, eat fucking ho-hos and goddamn gingerbread houses, okay? Even though it will fuck him up for like a week and a half, okay? Like I said, I mean, like this guy said, you know, like hasn't had sugar since before Christmas and doesn't miss it. Hang out with your family, you don't have to drink. Hang out with your family, you don't have to smoke cigarettes. Hang out with your family, you don't have to do drugs. Hang out with your family, you don't have to eat carbohydrates. And like I said, it's like, you know, if somebody is like, well, you can't hang out if you're not going to eat fucking all the carbs. It's like, cannot fucking, can't hang out with you then. I do not want to be if you're that kind of an asshole. Right, exactly, Jonathan, exactly. So let's go ahead and let's talk about alcoholism. Um, as applied to, uh, as applied to, uh, what should we call it? As applied to, um, you know, carb addictions. So this is actually out of my course. Okay. <laughs> I have a course on, uh, you know, on low carb diets. I have actually a section on getting fat adapted. 
okay, uh, you know, my group coaching people get it, the people who buy the course get it, my one-on-one clients get it. Okay, so let me go ahead and just like, you know, read like directly some of the things out here. So beating a sh carb or sugar addiction, okay? So carb or sugar addictions are just as real as alcoholism, anorexia, bulimia, or any other addiction or eating disorder, okay? So like I said, the, you know, it's like... Um, you know, it's like the very first thing you need to do is you need to admit that you have a problem, okay? Um, in Germany, where I lived for 14 years, there was a saying, uh, I don't have a problem with alcohol. It's just, it, I'm just not okay without it. And that was like a self-deprecating, pathetic joke that I never understood and I never found funny. But uh, basically, like you're saying like, hey, you know, I'm an alcoholic. Let's laugh at this, okay? And that's the exact same thing that I think when I hear people say like, you know, oh, I like carbs too much to go on a low-carb diet. If you can't live without alcohol, you need to stop fucking drinking entirely. If you can't live without donuts, you need to stop eating carbs entirely, period. You know, you are ruining your life by being drunk every day. You're ruining your liver. You're ruining your brain. You're ruining your life. You're being dehydrated chronically. You're not producing, you know, anything in terms of your work or, you know, hobbies, your family going to the gym. You're fucking yourself up. You are doing the same thing if you are constantly over-consuming carbohydrates. Okay? So, you know, like I said, you need to realize that this is a real problem. Okay, and like an alcoholic, you cannot convince someone that he's an alcoholic. Okay, you also cannot convince someone that he's a carb addict. Okay, you could just be there for him when he's ready. Like, listen, I'm gonna try, I'm probably gonna fuck it up, but I'm gonna try to stop drinking because I know I'm this shit ain't right. Same thing with carbohydrates. Okay, so. Uh, like I said, I think this is the reason why a lot of people, when they go on like a diet where they're allowed to eat like a half a donut or a little sliver of cake or have like one beer or do whatever, you know, they never are able to stay on the diet. But when they go on like a low carb diet, they suddenly start losing weight because you cannot eat like a little bit of rice. And then it's like, well, maybe I'll just eyeball it. Maybe I'll just have a little bit more. Maybe today I'll just make it a cheat day. Next thing you know, you're eating donuts and sandwiches and bread and whatever. Whereas if you eat like you know, a uh, an omelet, you're like, that was a good omelet. I enjoyed the omelet. My hunger is satisfied. I'm going to stop eating. I'm not going to eat omelets, okay, for fun. Like, I am like an alcoholic who drinks alcohol until he vomits. And I remember in the army, we used to joke, he's okay, he's just making room for more. And then you'd go ahead, you'd vomit, and then you'd start drinking alcohol again, okay? I am like that with carbohydrates. I will consume carbohydrates and I will be bloated. My face will be bloated. I'll be sweating. I'll feel horrible. You know, insulin spiked. You know, my blood sugar is going crazy. Like my whole body's just bloated in my stomach, obviously, because it's all in my stomach. And I will continue without regards for my own safety. I will continue to eat carbohydrates because I'm a fucking addict. Just like the alcoholic who drinks until he vomits and then drinks some more. And when I wake up in the next morning, I feel like an alcoholic. I'm hungover, have a carb hangover. And like an alcoholic, how do you feel better the day after a hangover? Drink another, have another sip of a alcohol and then you feel better and the, and, the, and the hangover goes away. It's the same thing with carbs. I wake up in the morning with a carb hangover. Well, if I have some more carbs, I'll feel better again. Now I can function. Now the problem is, as long as I continue, as long as I stay drunk, I can continue. I don't have a hangover. As long as I continue eating carbs, I could continue functioning, okay? If you're drunk, you're not going to the gym. If you're drunk, you're not going to be the same person, you know, like I said, in terms of, <clears throat> you know, your family, you know, work, everything. It's the same thing if you're constantly shoveling down carbs. Don't tell me that you wake up in the morning, you shovel down carbs, and you go running 10 kilometers. I remember the first time I ever ran when I was a kid. I came from a very unhealthy family. I was a very unhealthy young man. I ate a dozen donuts and then for the first time in my life, I went for a run. It was probably like June or July because I went to the Army in August. So it was probably June or July when I first started training to go to the Army. And I tried to run like a couple miles, maybe like three miles, like to the park, around the park and back. And I came back and like I vomited, projectile vomit. I emptied my entire stomach into the kitchen sink because it was so necessary that I vomit at this very particular moment right now that I did not have a split second to turn right and vomit in the garbage can. 
I literally did not have that kind of time. It just came all out, like all over the fucking thing. It just was absolutely one of the most horrendous experiences of my life. Okay, so don't tell me that you wake up in the morning, you have a beer, and you know you go run ten miles. Don't tell me you wake up in the morning with a carb hangover and you have a donut, and you go run ten miles. It doesn't happen. It ain't like that. Okay, so like I said, you basically have to admit you have a problem. Okay, um, so now what you have to do basically is you have to admit. Like an alcoholic, I have no power. I have no control over alcohol. You have to admit, you're like, I cannot eat carbohydrates in moderation. It doesn't work. I can't have one beer. I'm an alcoholic. I can't have one donut. I am a carbohydrate addict. Okay? And make no mistake, it is literally proven scientific fact that sugar is in fact addictive. Okay? And if you don't trust me, why do you think it is that people will take sugar and they'll put them in like, you know, McDonald's hamburgers? Okay, stuff like that. Like, you don't eat fat and want to eat fat after your hunger is satisfied. You don't want to eat like protein and continue to eat protein after your hunger is satisfied. But you do that with carbs. Okay? So, like I said, you have to admit that you have no control over this substance. That you are an addict and that... The only way that you can stop this addiction is by abstaining for the rest of your life. Okay? You never see an alcoholic, and if you do, he's fucking just... He, you never see an alcoholic in a rehabilitation center who's like, I can't wait until I get out of here. This you know, this sucks, but as soon as I get clean, and it could be alcohol, heroin, coke, whatever. As soon as I get clean, I am going to fucking party my ass off. Like... As soon as I get out of here, I am going to do a fucking line from like the front door of the rehab to fucking whatever fucking shithole fucking, you know, brothel bar, whatever fucking dumpster fucking park bench, wherever I'm going to end up. I'm just going to do one massive fucking line because I can't wait to get out here and to fucking get drunk, to shoot up, to fucking smoke, to get high, whatever. You never hear Somebody saying that, unless it's someone like John Jones who's going to a fucking rehabilitation center because the fucking, you know, court ordered him to. But like nobody who really wants to get clean is like that. You go into a rehabilitation center saying like they're going to lock me in a room, they're going to help me get off this drug, and I ain't never starting this shit again. But for some reason, when people go on a diet, they're like, I'm gonna drop carbs and I'm gonna go back to eating ho hos every day. Which is how you got fat in the first place, which means you're going to get fat again, which means you're wasting your time going on a low-carb diet, okay? You literally need to be like, I cannot ever eat carbohydrates ever again. Now, this goes also, this goes back to what I was saying in one of my previous lives for the 14-Day Keto Kickstart group about, um, about doing refeeds, you know, doing carbohydrate refeeds. I've done that before. That was my first experience was... You know, six days a week, keto, and one day a week, I just ate, you know, carbs. And it usually became a junk day, and I usually overate, okay? And at some point, I realized that it took me several days to get rid of the bloating, and that I felt horrible the next day. So, like I said, I realized that I just felt great six days out of, five days out of the week. The day where I ate the carbs started okay, but it ended rubbish, and the next day I felt like I was hungover. So... I just legitimately was like, why do I even have to do this anymore? I feel great without the carbs. I don't need them anymore, okay? And this is what it, what we're going to be coming to right now, okay? There are, a, there are a couple things that we could actually look forward to that do not involve carbohydrates, okay? So I just started this live by saying that I enjoy Cobb salads. Hold the croutons, double bacon, double gorgonzola. I actually enjoy eating that, okay? I actually enjoy eating um, like scrambled eggs, omelets, cheese, dairy, whatever, okay? Um, and I actually am grateful to have for everything that I can eat, okay? I do not miss eating the things that I do not, that I cannot really eat, okay? So for instance, uh, one, one of my standard meals, okay, it's mostly pure protein, is like, Non-fat, plain Greek yogurt. It's got some carbs in it, but not too many. And then I go ahead and I put in some whey protein, which 
increases the protein without really increasing the fat or the carbs, but it also puts a certain flavor. So whatever flavor the protein is, well, that's whatever flavor. It's like pudding. Some of my clients will put it in the freezer so it freezes a little bit so it becomes more like a, like a ice cream. But the point is, I actually like that. I eat that with a clear conscience knowing that it's low calorie, high protein, low fat, low carb. There's no downside in terms of I'm screwing up my body. I'm, you know, I'm getting protein, which is good to build muscle. I'm not getting anything that's going to make me retain fat or get fatter. You know, it's it tastes good. Okay, I'm not going to feel groggy afterwards. And I'm not going to, uh, like I said, I'm just, I, I, there's, there's no downside. There's only an upside. I actually enjoy that. I enjoy my salads, okay? When I was younger, my mother was known for making her lasagna, okay? She um, was known for making her lasagna, and I liked, well, I'm thinking back, I liked the grease, you know, whatever, you know, oils or whatever, and like the ricotta cheese. And I didn't really like anything else. I never really liked lasagna, even though she was like world famous for her lasagna, now, my girlfriend, uh, or ex, or whatever is going on with that crazy relationship, and I used to make like a casserole dish. We'd go ahead and we'd put in some really fatty ground beef, okay? And then we'd go ahead and we'd pour on a sauce that was made of like heavy cream, cream cheese, butter, um, you know, uh, some kind of cheese to flavor. I like gorgonzola, so I throw some gorgonzola in there. So we'd pour that in. Then we'd put on like sliced cheese as like a layer. Then we'd put more beef on. Then we'd put on, pour on some more of that sauce. Then we'd put on some sliced cheese or some shredded cheese. And that would be like a, what I call a fake lasagna. Okay. I loved it. It had everything that I loved about lasagna and it didn't have the pasta, which even when I was a kid and I didn't know what keto or low carb was, I never liked lasagna but I like, you know, that little like ricotta cheese thing. I think there's some ricotta cheese in the fake lasagna too. But whatever. The point is, you know, I, we could go ahead and we could eat that like date night. We could go ahead and put it in the refrigerator and have leftovers. And if I was bulking, I would eat my, you know, certain foods. And if I was hungry and my body was telling me like, bro, we need you know, some food to rebuild here. I would go ahead and I would, you know, eat some of that. I'd come take a little slice, put it on a plate, throw it in the microwave, heat it up, eat it. I enjoyed it. I loved it. Once again, I didn't eat the whole pan because I'm not addicted to fat and protein like I am addicted to carbohydrates. Okay, once again, I could eat that knowing that I'm getting the fat and the protein that I need to build my body to fuel my workouts, also knowing that I'm not getting in any carbs that's going to make me feel horrible, you know, raise my blood sugar, make me groggy, make me like just not there mentally, brain fog, whatever. I actually enjoyed that. Okay? Uh, you know, what I I my bulking is beyond the scope of this course, but basically when I bulk, I eat at maintenance, and when my body tells me that I need some more food, then I'll go ahead and I'll have some more food, okay? Should that happen like two, three days in a row where I'm eating extra food, okay, maybe I should bump up my calories a little bit by adding fat. So like I said, that's one meal that I would actually have as a date night, kind of a fun food with my girlfriend, you know, Saturday night, they watch the TV, listen to some music, have like a romantic dinner. It's also something I would have when I'm bulking. Like I said, hungry, come off a little slice, throw it in the microwave and eat it. Okay. Another thing was pepperoni pizzas. Those are pizzas made out of pepperoni. Like I literally put pepperoni on a plate, throw some shredded cheese on top, a little salt, a little potassium salt, throw it in the microwave and I would eat that. Okay. Once again, I'm getting you know, some protein, but I'm getting a lot of fat, which I may be needing if I am for some reason have a greater output of energy, you know, like I'm building muscle or I'm doing a different kind of a workout. Okay. So I actually enjoy that. I don't sit there like, you know, screw this pepperoni with some cheese on top. I wish I had a real pizza, you know, screw this Greek yogurt with uh, whey protein. I wish I had, I wish I had a real, uh, you know, ice cream. I legitimately enjoy that. And I don't feel bad afterwards. Okay. So that's what you need to do. You need to like, Get to the point where you realize carbs make you feel bad. You cannot handle the carbs, but this food makes you feel good. It gives you everything you need to build your body or to burn fat off your body while maintaining the muscle, and it doesn't make you feel bad. No downside, just upside, okay? So that's one thing. Another thing to think about is, like I said about being an alcoholic, okay? When you're an alcoholic, you, know, you don't wake up in the morning and just you know have a couple beers to get rid of the hangover and they go on a 10-mile run. You don't. 
okay? You are not as with it with your family, okay? If you have a bunch of alcoholic friends hanging out in a bar, maybe that is, you know, that will help your relationships. Not relationships you should have, but, you know, the relationship with your family, with your kids at work, the work you provide, do, you're not going to, you know, be drinking at lunch, you know, sneaking alcohol all day, be, come home drunk and then like create a business on the side. You're not going to do that, okay? So like think about it, all the stuff that alcohol is ruining in your life, okay? So it's not just a matter of like, you know, the same thing with carbs. So it's not just a matter of like, I don't need to eat pizzas. I could have this like fake pepperoni pizza. I don't need lasagna. I could have this like fake lasagna. Okay, what we're really looking at now is like, you know, if I eat a bunch of carbs, I'm going to be sitting here feeling like crap. Now I'm feeling like crap, which means that I'm going to go ahead and eat more carbs because I get a dopamine rush when I eat garbage food, which makes me feel better, even though I'm feeling bad, which makes me feel worse after I feel better, which means that I need another dopamine hit. So you're like an you're like a crack addict or like a, a fucking coke addict, like doing a bump, like do a bump. Oh man. And then you feel bad. But do another bump. You're okay. Just, just do a little more bump and then you're fine. Okay. And it's the same thing here. Do that all night. I don't have time to work out at night because I'm going to sit and watch Netflix and eat carbs for six hours. You know, I can't wake up in the morning and work out because, you know, I'm going to stay up until three in the morning eating carbs and watching Netflix, feeling sorry for myself, self-medicating with dopamine from junk food, okay? So, like I said, this is really not the situation you want to be in, okay? So when I, like I said, like not only do I feel good because I actually enjoy eating the food, but it's also like by not eating this food, I am enabling myself to be a better person for everybody in the world. Like, you know, I'm working, you know, like I got my, my business here, okay? Like I am better at work, so to speak, because I'm not just sitting around eating donuts all day, okay? You know, I am a better example for people in my family, okay, because I'm not sitting around eating donuts all day, okay? So like I'm going to give you an example, like... I don't have any kids. My girlfriend, or like I said, ex or whatever, whatever the situation is, you know, has you know grandkids and grandkids. And like there was a point when I was like taking care of the grandkids. Those kids thought I was awesome. Like when they left, and like their mother told their their mother, my girlfriend, like you know, God, you know, they love him. Like they want to go to the gym with him. They want to learn to fight with him. They want to go shooting with him. They were like little kids. Like we didn't even talk about a lot of this stuff. But they just thought that was fucking cool. Now, I also could have been sitting on my ass, smoking cigarettes, drinking beer, and eating horse shit, and being like not capable of getting off the sofa without a huge amount of effort. And they either would have thought I was a big piece of shit, which I would have been, or they would have been like, wow, you know, it was awesome. We went there and we had like five pizzas and we had like five ice creams and we had like, you know, five sodas and all this and you know, when I grew up, I want to be like Bob. I want to be like, you know, grandpa, step grandpa Bob here who I wouldn't be able to smoke cigarettes too because he does. And I think he's pretty cool. You know, either A, they would have thought I was a joke, which I would have been, or B, they would have been like, they would be like me, which means they would have be fat and out of shape and they would have died of a heart attack, you know, sooner than they should. So like I said, like, you know, that's another thing, you know, like, I remember I was, I'm in a coaching group. Okay. I have a coach as well for business. Okay. And we were in a, a live call today and they were talking about like, you know, reasons why people hire trainers, you know, and you know, one of the guys was like, you know, there, there are people out there like in real pain, like, you know, I need to lose fat. Why? Oh, because you know what I'm like, put on my clothes and whatever, you know, it's kind of like embarrassing when my gut slips out or whatever. It's like, okay, well, you know, what's, you know, what's, what's like really bothering you. And they're like, my wife doesn't want to have sex with me anymore because, I've gained so much weight and I'm so out of shape and she just doesn't find me attractive, you know? And I was like, fuck, damn, like that's, that's pretty fucking heavy. But once again, getting back to, you know, alcoholism, when I was living in Germany, you know, there was a girl that I knew who was like, you know, she was talking about like her relationship with John the Rock. She's like, I just don't want to have sex with an alcoholic anymore. Aside from the fact that he was out of shape and overweight and everything, she just didn't want to have sex with a fucking drunk, you know? Like, and it's the same thing here. It's like, you know, do you want to be the kind of person that like your wife is proud of or do you want to be the kind of person like she doesn't want to see you, you know, like she doesn't want to see you much less have anybody else see you. Okay. 
and I'm not saying that to piss anybody off. I'm just saying, like, literally, like, if you eat ice cream, you are going to eventually become the kind of person that nobody wants to have intercourse with. And if you're in a relationship, it's your job to be the kind of person that somebody wants to have intercourse with. Okay, at least your wife, or, you know, or husband or whatever should want to have intercourse with you. You know, if you have, like, the Greek yogurt with whey protein, you're going to be more of the kind of person that somebody wants to have intercourse with. Okay, if you have the fake, you know, fake ravioli or the fake lasagna, you're going to be the kind of person that people would have intercourse with. Okay, like I remember when, um, you know, when I got very lean the first time, like the first time when I was just like way overweight and I got lean just for the sake of getting lean, my ninja assassin transformation. Okay, when I was 40, uh, you know, I've seen a girl. You know, and she's like, hey, I'm going to go visit a friend of mine. You want to come? We're like, all right, fine. So, you know, she came by that we you know, drove off to the next city and spent the weekend with her friend. You know, and uh, she was like, you know, and, and then like, so we're like going to bed and we're like, you know, sleeping. She's like, tomorrow morning when you wake up and you come down to breakfast, I want you to leave your shirt off. And I kind of sat there and I'm like, she's like, kind of like, she'd be like a bimbo. Like, you know, she, the reason I'm here visiting her friend over the weekend is because she wants to show off this fucking hot piece of man ass that she has. And I thought that was fucking awesome. Like, I'm not going to lie. That was like the first time that that's legitimately happened to me. And I was like, it was, it was like really fucking cool. You know, like I remember the first time that, um, I went to a, um, I, I got, just got to Florida. Okay. I was right, you know, towards the end of my ninja, ninja assassin transformation. I was getting lean and, um, you know, I met a girl, girls in Florida, almost all of them love the beach, you know? So she's like, I'm going to the beach this week. You want to come? Like, all right, fine. So, you know, we're in her apartment, like tear, you know, taking down like all of her little bags and all her little chairs and everything to the car, you know? And, she, you know, she's like, you know, she's like, um, you know, we're walking out to the car. She doesn't look at me. She just kind of like says something, you know, just like she just wanted to say it, but she didn't know how. And she's like, if you say one thing about my body, we're going to pack everything up and we're going to go home immediately. And like, I didn't. She was gorgeous. I mean, she was this hot little tattooed blonde. I mean, she was gorgeous. Like, honestly, like, I was legitimately thinking to myself the entire time, like, this is going to be so awesome. I'm going to be laying on the beach with this, like, practically naked blonde chick laying next to me. And, like, we're going to be, like, you know, so I'm going to be talking to her about, like, everything that's going to happen, like, when we get alone and stuff. And everybody's going to be, like, fucking, like, looking at her. And I'm like, this is going to be fucking awesome. Like, I, she was fucking hot. You know, she was, like, you know when she, you know, got out of college, she like screwed around for like a summer or two. Like, like she was like a girl on like a golf cart driving around a, you know, big expensive golf course. Be like, Hey guys, you want a drink or whatever, like selling drinks or whatever. You know, she was like a Hooters girl at one point, you know, when I met her, of course she was like settled down and, you know, she had like a corporate job and whatever, but like, she was fucking hot. I'm not going to bullshit you. And this chick was like, because she was not like 18 years old anymore. And I don't know if she had like a little bit of loose skin somewhere. So I don't know what the hell, like women have issues. But she legitimately thought, like, she was concerned about me. Uh, this should be my 2023 goal, fit enough to be a male escort. Yeah. No, but seriously, like, you know, when she said that, I was like, holy shit. Like, you know, I'm thinking about how hot she is. And she's, like, legitimately thinking, like, you know, this guy has, like, this, you know, perfect body. And it's like, that's the kind of thing that you need to think to yourself. Like, what is, you know, what's happening with your goals? Like, what is... You know, what's, when you do something, is it bringing you closer to or further away from your goals? If you wake up, you don't want to go to the gym. Is going to the gym going to bring you closer to or further away from your goals? You know, is not going to the gym and sleeping in going to take you closer to or further away from your goals? You know, and that's like you said, the guy's joking here about wanting to be a male escort being his, you know, 2023, uh, you know, uh, New Year's resolution. But the fact of the matter is, I've got, that's a real question. Have you ever been a woman's sexual fantasy? That's literally a quite like, have you ever been a woman's sexual fantasy? You know, I went out to see Magic Mike um, 2 or was it 1 or whatever it, with, with a girl in the fucking, you know, in the uh, in the theater. And there were all these girls going out. You know, the girls night, they were all drunk. They were all, you know, ho-hoed up and they were all having fun, you know, because they wanted to see these guys. You know, it's just like when, you know, we used to watch Baywatch or whatever, you know. I'll admit it. When I was a kid, I was in the army. I was a tough son of a bitch. And I went to see the Spice Girls movie because I thought they were all fucking hot. I'm not going to bullshit you. But have you ever been that? Like, can you imagine being the kind of person, 
that like a woman looks at and is like sexually desires. Okay. You cannot do that if you have a carbohydrate addiction and you choose to just eat carbs all day. It's legitimately a choice. Okay. So like I said, it's like I actually enjoy eating healthy food. That makes me feel good. Doesn't give me a bad conscience. Doesn't take me away from my goals, whatever. Da, 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 da. I do not miss the ice cream. I do not miss, you know, the pasta, whatever. And it's the same thing here. Like, is eating this donut really worth not being someone's sexual fantasy? You know, is this, eating this donut more important than my wife being extremely attracted to me? You know, is eating this donut more important than being a good role model for my kids. One of my first uh, one-on-one clients actually said that. I was asking, like, why he wants to train, uh, you know, why he wants to get in shape. And, and he actually, he just wrote down in, like, the questionnaire. He's like, I know I'm not being a good role model for my kids, for my daughter. It's, it's very specific. He's like, I know I'm not being a good role model for my daughter. I need to change that. You know, like, your your kids are going to do what, what they learn from you. You know, and... You could be a good role model or a bad role model. And if your knees hurt and your back hurts because of all the weight you're carrying, you know, if you're pre-diabetic, if you fucking have high blood pressure, if you're ashamed of yourself, if you've never been the kind of guy who could get a woman in his life and you're fucking lonely and you have to settle for some bitch you don't like, you know, is this really what you want for your kids? I It's, it's just a simple fact, you know? It's like, you know, you could drink alcohol, you could smoke cigarettes, you could do drugs, and your kids are probably going to end up being the same as you. Or you could be the one who breaks the chain. You know, it's like, I remember, you know, like I knew a couple guys who fucking were beaten up, like as kids. And they're like, man, I'm, I'm breaking the chain, bro. Like, I'm, I'm not going to fucking, I'm not going to fucking beat my kids up. You know, and they're like, they'd be the first person in their family who doesn't beat their kids. Because, you know, daddy beat them and their daddy's daddy beat them. And daddy's 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 daddy's. Everybody beat their kids. And they're like, fuck this shit. I'm not, I'm not going to beat my kids. I'm going to raise my kids the right way. And, you know, you could do the same thing here. You could break the chain of alcoholism. You could break the chain of smoking cigarettes, you know, getting pregnant when you're 14, having kids and dropping out of school. You could, you know, be the first person in your you know, family to go to college. And you could also be like the first person in your family to live a healthy life, to work out. I remember when I was a kid, I was doing martial arts and there was a guy who was uh, 30 years old. I thought he was so fucking old. And, um, he was, you know, he was overweight. And I was like, bro, like I see her. I mean, he wasn't hugely overweight. He's probably was called average these days. But back then, you know, t- you know, 40 years ago was like, wow, you know, whatever. I can't believe, you know, this guy's so out of shape and stuff, you know, being in the martial arts and stuff. And he's like, dude, you don't understand. Like when I was a kid, you know, when I was a kid, like my father would wake me up on the weekends and it would be like, all right, come on, man. You know, it's just you and me, it's just the guys. And, you know, they'd make like, you know, all kinds of food and stuff, you know? And of course they'd make like, you know, bacon and eggs, but they'd also make like, come on, you know, French toast and plenty of syrup and pancakes and bread and butter and marmalade and donuts and stuff like that too. And, you know, he said it was, it was like a big thing. It was like, this is my time with dad. This is how I bond with dad. It's like, you know, dad's not working on the weekends. We wake up early in the morning, just us guys and the girls stay in bed and, you know, and we go ahead and we have our time together. It's like, you know, you could also take your kid on a walk. You could also take your kid on a run. You could grab the focus mitts, go in the backyard and teach your kid how to, you know, throw elbows and knees. You could, you know, you could teach your kid how to jump rope and do jump rope intervals. You could teach your kid how to do push-ups and pull-ups. You could do lots of shit, you know, and like this guy, you know, in his, in his 30s was overweight, okay, and out of shape because dad taught him this is how men bond. This dad taught him this is, you know, how we are happy. You could do something different, you know? So basically we're looking at three different things so far. Number one, enjoy the foods you can eat. Don't worry about the foods you can't eat, okay? Number two is... You know, enjoy the experiences you can have being in shape that you will not have if you're not in shape. You know, is a donut more important than, you know, like I said, being attractive to your wife, for instance, husband, whatever. Okay. And another thing is, like I said, it's like, you know, it's just like the life that you live here. You know, like I said, like, what are you going, you know, what kind of a, of a, what kind of a ideal are you setting for your children? What kind of an ideal are you setting for, you know, the people around you. Like, I know in, uh, what was it, uh, Science of Getting Rich, okay? You got to read that book. It's an awesome book. 
okay, law of attraction stuff, but it's applicable to all areas, you know, of life. And one of the things he said is like, you know, it's, you can't like, you know, help the poor by giving them welfare. You help the poor by setting an example. I was poor and now I am not poor. And if you do not want to be poor, you can also be not poor like I did because I set the example. And if I did, you could do it, okay? And it's the same thing here. You know, you cannot make people change their lives, but you can set an example, okay? And if somebody's ready, they can actually follow the example. The only difference is if somebody's ready, you know, like I said, if you're talking about your drinking buddies, it's very unlikely that they're going to be like, you know, okay, instead of going to the bar, I'm going to go to the gym with you every day after work. Instead of smoking cigarettes and drinking beer all day and eating chicken wings at lunch, I'm going to go ahead and have chicken out of a Tupperware. Unlikely they're going to do that. But the most important people in your life, the kids, okay, they should be the most important people in your life. Those are the ones, like I said. I was actually at a very small gym in a little, you know, kind of a country town that I was living in at one at one point in Florida. And there was a girl who was extremely overweight. And her boyfriend probably was like in very good shape, extremely, extremely good shape. And she had like a little daughter who was like, she was like awesome. She was like a little adult. Like, you know, she went there and she had her gym clothes on and she had a little, you know, headphones on. And, you know, I remember seeing like the boyfriend you know, sitting down there and he's like making, you know, making his like shakes or whatever. I don't know if it's like intra workout shake. And she was like going ahead and doing something. I don't know if she had like some kind of a carb shake or something. I'm sure she wasn't taking pre-workout at her age. You know, she's very young. But the point is like, she had a mother who was like, you know, for, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I don't know. Can I say this? Is this politically correct? Because I'm white, the you know, like white trash, trailer trash, you know, kind of like fat, fucking totally out of shape. Oh, horrible, horrible, horrible. It, it, go to Walmart. You'll know what I go to Walmart and you'll see who I'm talking about. The guy was in really good shape, and the girl, like the daughter, was like navigating to the guy. Like, if they stayed together, she would have, like I said, she had her little headphones on and she was just like, you know, she she looked like a like 20 year old fitness model, but she was like 10 years old. She would have had lived his life. And what happened is I never really saw the guy again or I never saw them together. And the girl, like the, the out of shape chick, went there a few times with the, you know, with the little girl. And, you know, I don't know what happened, but I'm willing to bet that basically that guy, for some reason, broke up with mom. And that girl is probably going to end up just like mom, you know. Once again, it's like, you know, my boyfriend broke up with me. Mom took me out to eat crap. What did I learn? If you feel bad, eat crap. You'll feel good. I went ahead and did really well on whatever. Hey, let's celebrate. We're going to go ahead. We're going to eat some crap. I feel good. I eat crap. You know, want to hang out. Instead of going out with your friends this week and want to hang out with mom. Sure. What are we going to do? We're going to go out. We're going to eat crap. Awesome. So I'm bored. Ah, well, go ahead and eat some crap. You know, there's white trash junk food that I got from the dollar store in the refrigerator. Go ahead and, you know, sit on the sofa and we'll fucking watch TV and we'll eat crap. So I'm bored, I eat crap. I feel good, I eat crap. I feel bad, I eat crap. I want to bond with somebody, I eat crap. And that's, like I said, that's what a lot of people teach their kids. Okay? You know, and like I said, you could do the exact same thing. You could, you know, do the exact same thing. You could be like, you know, you want to bond? Let's go for a walk. You want to bond? You know, let's, you know, go ahead and, you know, train in some martial arts. Let's play a sport. Let's, you know, go swimming. Let's do whatever. Okay. You know, you, you feel bad. Your boyfriend broke up with you. Your girlfriend broke up with you. Fine. We're going to work. We're going to do some self-improvement. That bitch, that son of a bitch, whatever is going to fucking rue the day that he, she broke up with you. Because you're going to be a better person. You're going to learn a language. You're going to fucking drop fucking a couple inches from your waist. You're going to put a couple inches on your arms or your ass, I guess, if, if it's a girl. You know, that's what we're going to do. You know, bond with mom. Bond with dad. We're going to go ahead and we're going to train. We're going to eat well, you know. We're going to go out and we're going to have a salad. When I was a kid, my father would wake me up and the girls would stay in bed and we'd go ahead and we'd have a salad. It was fucking awesome. You know, we'd go ahead and we'd have a steak. It was fucking awesome. That's the way it is. You know, that's what you do. When I hang out with men. I have a steak. That's what I do. You know, you could, you could, like I said, you could go ahead and set you know, things up like that. Like, you know, I did really well. Let's celebrate. Hey, you know, let's great. You know, let, do something positive, do something positive. So anyway, like I said, that's basically, uh, that's basically what I have to say. Okay. About, uh, dealing with, uh, your carbohydrates, a 
prediction. Now let's see if I could actually figure out how to see this on, uh, okay. Do we have any comments? Okay. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, favorite cheat day is a salad with meatballs and cheese. Yes, exactly, exactly. Like I said, uh, I said this before for the people who haven't seen it yet. Uh, meatballs you need to be very careful with because a lot of meatballs have, you know, breadcrumbs, which are obviously full of carbs. Meatballs, the concept of the meatball is awesome. Just a bunch of meat, you cook it yourself, fine. A bunch of meat with egg, cook it yourself, fine, okay? Careful if you go to a restaurant, you buy it somewhere else, you buy it pre-made because there's probably going to be carbs all over it. Love a juicy steak with eggs, exactly, okay? You know, people say, like, I hate the the, the uh, you know, the ketogenic diet because it's impossible to eat. You go into any restaurant in the world, okay, unless it's some weird, like, you know, niche restaurant, but, like, 99% of the restaurants in the world, you are going to have um, – you are going to have the ability to eat like some kind of a salad without rubbish in it, okay? You're going to have the ability to eat like, you know, to drink water, okay, to drink coffee. You know, you're going to have the uh, the ability to have like meat, whether it's, you know, fish, fowl, you know, beef, pork, whatever. You're going to have the ability to eat meat, eggs, and dairy and drink water and coffee, okay? Have a salad, have some cheese, whatever, okay? You're going to have the opportunity to do that. You know, and like I said, it's like, so I'll, I mean, I will go out and, you know, I could go out, let's say Outback. Okay. Do I have to have this blooming onion, which is covered in all kinds of fat and like literally like 1300 calories? No. You know I mean? Do I have to have like the bread? No. Okay. Like I've literally eaten butter when somebody else had butter and bread. I just eat the bread. I had the butter, you know, uh, like I said, you know, and in America for people who travel a lot whether they're traveling like salesmen, businessmen, they're on the road a lot, they're truckers. You know, I get a lot of truckers asking me, what do you do? What you do is in America, it, you know, there's always like a 24 hour, um, a 24 hour, um, you know, diner where you could go in, you could have meat, eggs and dairy. Okay. Just go in there and have like a hamburger, maybe a cheeseburger, maybe a bacon cheeseburger, fine, whatever. You know, you could have a couple eggs, you could have some bacon, you know, you could have whatever. You know, let me give like give me like a side of like whatever it's kind of scrambled eggs and you know a, a bunless hamburger, okay, whatever. You could always have food, okay, uh, that will fit in the ketogenic diet. Whether you go to a ten star restaurant or the cheapest diner in the world, okay. Um, I had a conversation with one of my clients, uh, Joe P, who just happens to be commenting here. Hi, Joe P. Uh, yeah, I had a conversation with him today. Uh, you know, he was like stuck because family emergency had to get in the car, drive off somewhere, take care of somebody. You know, he had like some boiled eggs or whatever. What I told him is <clears throat> when I was doing my ninja assassin transformation, I ended up getting stuck somewhere without my prepackaged food too. So I just went into a supermarket. I was on relatively low fat, high protein, uh, obviously low carb. So I just grabbed like, um, a little bag of tuna, okay, for the pure protein, and some almonds. And I just counted out instead of, you know, instead of weighing the almonds, I counted them out. Uh, you know, I've also, uh, I've also gone to a restaurant and grabbed, like, some deli meat, like some sliced chicken, okay? Uh, eating that, okay? So, like I said, there's, uh, you know, you can always, you can always stop at, a, like, in a supermarket. You don't have to have, you know, ho-hos and donuts or whatever, okay? As a matter of fact, I drove at one point because my, uh, you know, girlfriend was having an enhancement. So we drove from North Florida down to Miami several times to see the doctor, like beforehand, after and stuff. And uh, there were a couple of times that I stopped at a nice, but I stopped at a uh, at a gas station and it had a salad. And like I said, there are some nice gas stations that have some nice salads. So it's like I said, you no reason for you to go off your diet. Have not had sugar since before Christmas. Have not missed it yet. Like I said, Christmas is about hanging out with people, okay? You know, like uh, if you're an alcoholic, it doesn't mean that you have to drink to hang out with somebody. If somebody's like, you can't drink, it, you know, if you don't drink, you can't hang out with us for Christmas. Fuck those people. Um, you know, and it's the same thing here. Like I said, well, you know, if you don't eat carbs, you can hang out with us. Like, no, I'm hanging out with people because I like people. I'm not hanging out with you. If, if you're not going to hang out with me, if I don't eat fucking cake, fuck you. How about that? Okay. Send your wife my way when fucking she breaks up with you because you're fat as fuck. You goddamn loser. Okay. Um, 
not that you're a loser because you're fat, but you're a loser because, you know, you're trying to force me to eat carbs because, you know, whatever. Okay. Good, good, good. Okay. Anyway, if we have no more questions, I appreciate you guys jumping on the live stream on YouTube and also, of course, in the Facebook group. Okay. Uh, if you guys have not yet, okay, subscribe to the channel, Raw Strength and Muscle. Comment down below. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm going to be doing another live stream tomorrow because today's Tuesday. I should have done one on Monday, so I'm going to do another live stream tomorrow. Okay, and what I go ahead and put out in the community, asking for questions, you guys go ahead and uh, post any questions you have. Uh, aside from that, like I said, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. Uh, guys in the group, I will be talking to you in the Facebook group. We're going to be doing another live stream in the Facebook and on YouTube tomorrow. Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, and I will hope to see all of you guys there. Thank you guys for jumping in. I hope this helps and I'll see you in the next live stream.